All right, now I'm in the Black 3. Now, Men in Black 3 starts off with J and K. Their partnership isn't going so well. J feels K is not trying to let him know things, and he wants him to know stuff. But K's not opening up. Okay? And one day, they find out Boris the Animal escapes and has a little pass with K at the moment. At, with K. Ugh. I hate when I get tongue twisted. <laughs> So that worries Kay, and he prepares for a battle with Boris, only to mysteriously disappear in, myster in thin air, just like that. And it hits Jay, like in a way, and Jay has these cravings of chocolate milk. Okay, then he goes to find, he goes back to the MIB headquarters just to find out Kay's been mysteriously been dead for 40 years. How? We don't know yet. So, he he literally has to j time jump, I mean jump, into I think 1950, 57 I believe, or 60, no, 1965 or something like that. You know, right before JFK, whatever, JFK's assassination or whatever, but you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> he has to go back there and rescue K, and he finds Boris the animal, the that version of Boris the Animal, not the one that went back in time. And right when he's getting ready to shoot him, he gets caught by a younger K, played by Josh Brolin. And dear Lord, Josh Brolin is the best K in existence, man. This man knew, this man, like, he, he done his homework. Josh Brolin did his fucking homework, okay? You can swear he was a young version of Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, fucking hell. That man has to look. He sounds just like him. I mean, come on. Okay? It would have been awesome if they had like a Back to the Future moment where the old K and the young K would have saw each other. That would have been awesome. <laughs> but we didn't get that part. But, <clears throat> yeah, so he is interrogated by him and he wants to know things. He was getting ready to neuralize Jay until Jay really told him the truth. He's like, all right. <laughs> so he helps Jay to basically save himself. <laughs> and that's the plot. What I liked about this movie was the development of Jay and Kay's relationship. They showed the relationship between the younger Kay and Jay, basically. When the older... K and J's relationship was hitting the rocks real hard. So I like that purpose. And another purpose I liked was how um, they're at the military base and K literally has a neuralizer with a big ass battery pack and the cord is hooked up to it and he's turning it on and he has the glasses already on. He's trying to turn it on and it has to charge up. I like how they have the little neuralizer, um, how you say it, like the history of the neuralizer. It wasn't just a little thing, you just have to charge that shit up and stuff. I like that part. <laughs> but, now for some of the negatives. The jokes. Some of the jokes fall completely flat. And I mean completely flat. And it, it was kind of slow in the beginning. It didn't get good until like 20 or 30 minutes into the movie. It was just like kind of slow paced and stuff like that. But once you realize the twist at the end of this movie, and there is a twist, you'll be like, holy shit, that literally wraps up the entire fucking Men in Black franchise. I mean, literally wraps the movies up. And that's a good thing. Don't make a four, okay? It ended perfectly. Now for the second gripe. Kate, I mean, Jay's obsession for chocolate milk. After Kay's disappearance, Jay had a weird obsession for chocolate milk. Okay? And it's never explained why he has this obsession. His, this obsession. It's like you literally have to use your mind. So I used my mind. I came up with the fact that he probably had this obsession because that's probably what he drank when he was a little boy. Since, yes, spoiler alert, there is a little younger version of Jay in here as well. Probably about 9 or 10 years old. But... Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, as for Boris the Animal, he's kind of a weak villain. Not really much to go on. It's just one of those 
whatever villain, just like Men in Black 2, when she was just that whatever blue, whatever villain. You don't really care about him. So, once you get the, the logistics of what this movie is about, you're going to like that ending. That ending came out of nowhere. And I know Men in Black had a script problems. They shot half the film on half of a script. But it looked like they came up with a better ending than probably what they would have had. And for that, I'm going to give Men in Black 3 a B. It was a okay movie, but the first one's still the best. So let me know what y'all think of Men in Black 3. Did y'all like it? Did y'all hate it? What are y'all thoughts below? Let me know. I'll see y'all in the next video.